Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about object-oriented programming. And I will make my best attempt to explain why we use it to a beginner, so let's get into it. So the question in question here is basically, can you explain to a beginner why we use object-oriented programming? And this is a, it's going to be tricky to put, to put into one single video, but I will try my best. So the best way that I can describe this is that when we work with software and logic, we have different so-called entities or domain models that we want to express. If you think about it, there are these natural concepts when then, whenever you try to describe a problem that you want to express. In mathematics, it's a, very, it's a very similar thing. Like when you get a math problem, it's usually not just unless you're in in the lower grades of school, it's not. It's usually not just a harder equation where you know some numbers uh, are put on a piece of paper before you, and then are equal to something else. It's usually a problem where you describe a person who, yeah, you have Bob and he's go. He has that amount of apples, and then he has some oranges, and then he's going to combine them. Can he combine them? Like we, uh, apples and oranges are examples of this, where we actually try to express like the concepts within the problem. And that is what we call a problem domain. In other words, we have these words that very easily describe a entity within our problem domain or our system. So uh, in the programming world, an example would be if I have a web shop, I very naturally need to map certain entities that have information. An example is I need to explain what a user is to my system. I need to have some representation of what a user is. And a user usually has some properties. These properties are just pieces of data that I need to store about this user to be able to do things efficiently. An example is I need to know their name, I need to know their email address and their like their street address so I can send them orders and things like that. These things needs to be in some type of structure and these properties apply to any entity basically. The same goes for a an order. An order will contain maybe a user reference, like an order will have a reference to a user so I know who made the order. And then I will have a list of items or products that this person has has actually desired to purchase from my web shop. And that brings us to the product, which is also an entity. And all these entities, they very naturally fit into, into the object-oriented model. And at the very core of it, object-oriented programming is just you creating one of these entities that has certain properties. And then you can add basically methods or like functions that perform different operations. Like an example is that you try to group all the things that has to do with the user into the user object or the user model as we call it. So you might have a user's name, username and address. And then you might have a method that says perch, like uh, something like uh, be to be able to print the personal information of this person or maybe you have a method that says update the address of this person if they change their address or if they change their email or something like that update email things or update name if that's also possible to do within the system and these these pieces of functionality in object oriented programming what you want is to group all of those things together into well ideally it doesn't have to be one single file but one single entity so that all of this functionality or this grouping of properties and logic is as closely associated to the information about the user as humanly possible now that is the, the like the foundation it's just a way for us to structure and group our logic so we create an object, which is the whole idea of object-oriented programming, that represents the data and the functionality that we have within our system that is related to that specific entity, so as, as an user. The product model might have all right, the cost of the product and some product information, and it might have other like specific things that are related to the product. So you don't put that in the user, you put that in the product model. And then you have the order model. As I said, it might have, the order model might have these properties such as the user that we're gonna send the order to and the product that is going to get sent. And then it might have a few methods that says things like send email to user when order has been processed 
or things of this nature. So I hope that makes sense to you. You simply, in object-oriented program, you simply group things by association to the entity that you are the, that you're working with. And then we have other function pieces of functionality that allows us to work with this where we have more advanced concepts such as say inheritance where you say that one entity is a child or a subtype of another entity. And that's where this kind of comes, again, comes in. Because in our system, let's say that we have a user. Now our users are just people who we want to give a certain, a certain, inf in a certain we just want to associate certain information with these users and certain functionality. But then we have another type of user. Usually a very natural subtype of a user is an admin or an administrator. And they basically have the same rights within the system because we want our, we, you know, we want our admins to be able to log into the product, to store this information about themselves and use different parts of the system just as anybody else. But they should also have some extra benefits. So then you can say that, all right, I will create a subtype from a user that we, which we call an admin, and they have pretty much the same information. They have a name, they have a username, a name, an email, and all of this stuff that the user has. But they also have certain things such as, say, process, um, update order basket or up, uh, add products to the system. These sorts of methods that is much much more powerful because they have privileged access, as we call it, to the system. They're allowed to do certain things that a user is not allowed to do. And that's the basics of inheritance, that you have one entity that you want to extend or inherit from and create additional functionality. So hopefully this is probably the easiest way that I can explain it. I, and the reason why this is so popular is basically that if you imagine yourself working on a whiteboard where you try to map out all the pieces that are going to make up your problem domain or your system, it's very natural that you draw boxes and then you draw lines between the boxes and explain, try to explain how all of these boxes are connected. So a user is connected to an order, an or and the product is connected to an order. There, the order and the use, uh, the the user and the product, they are not connected, but the order is the, the binding point here. And then you can start mapping that out basically with just boxes on a white whiteboard. And if you try to actually do that, you will start to very clearly see that object-oriented programming has this benefit that it's very easy for us humans to map out a domain or a system of different concepts in this fashion. So what I want you to take away from this is that the basics of object-oriented programming is just that you create a model or what we call an entity that represents the data that your system needs to have and the functionality you need, your system needs to have that is associated with a specific concept. So a user has the information about a user and all the functionality that a user can do within the system. A order has the order information and all the things that can happen with an order within the system and so forth and so forth. And that is all object-oriented programming actually is. And the benefit, as I said, is that it's a fairly easy concept to grasp and it's a fairly easy thing to talk about when you have a discussion about the system. And the, that's the big benefit. The easier that you, you can make the system, the easier it is to maintain it and actually work on it. That's usually the way it goes anyway. Have a great day.